for many students, crafting a strong research paper from scratch can feel like a daunting task. In this video, we'll unpack what exactly a research paper is, what it needs to do, and how to write one the smart way. Let's do it. Hey, my name's Emma, and today we're gonna explore the research paper writing process from A to Z. To get the most from this video, be sure to grab a copy of our free research paper template. This template provides you with a tried and trusted structure to fast track your research paper, as well as access to loads of free resources that will help you along the way. You can find the link to that in the description. All right, so let's start by asking the most important question, what exactly is a research paper? Simply put, a research paper is typically a scholarly written work where the writer, that's you, answers a specific question through evidence-based arguments. Evidence-based is the key word here. In other words, a research paper is different from an essay or other writing assignments that draw from the writer's personal opinions or experiences. With a research paper, it's all about the evidence. Now, now, it's worth noting that there are many different types of research papers, including analytical papers, the type I just described, argumentative papers, and interpretive papers. In this video, we'll focus on analytical papers as these are some of the most common. But if you're keen to learn about other types of research papers, be sure to check out the Grad Coach blog over at gradcoach.com slash blog. All right, with that basic foundation laid, let's get down to business and look at how to write a research paper. While there are many potential approaches that you can take to write a research paper, there are, broadly speaking, three stages to the writing process. In this tutorial, we will present a straightforward three-step process that we use when working with students at GradCoach. These three steps are to find a research topic and review the existing literature, to develop a provisional structure and outline for your paper, and to write up your initial draft and then refine it iteratively. So let's start with the first step. That is finding a topic and reviewing the literature. Now, if you recall, I mentioned earlier that in a research paper, you, as the researcher, will try to answer a question. More specifically, that's called a research question, and it sets the direction of your entire paper. What's important to understand, though, is that you'll need to answer that research question with the help of high quality sources. For example, journal articles, government reports, case studies, and so on. We'll circle back to this one in a minute. The first stage of the research process is deciding on what your research question will be and then reviewing the existing literature. In other words, past studies and papers to see what they say about that specific research question. In some cases, your professor may provide you with a predetermined research question or set of questions. However, in many cases, you'll need to find your own research question within a certain topic area. Finding a strong research question hinges on identifying a meaningful research gap, which is an area that's lacking in existing research. There's a lot to unpack here. So if you wanna learn more about research gaps and research questions, we've got a host of easy to follow explainer videos and articles over on the Grad Coach blog. You can find the links to those in the description. Once you've figured out which question or questions you'll attempt to answer in your research paper, you'll need to do a deep dive into the existing literature. This is called a literature search. Again, there are many ways to go about this, but your most likely starting point will be Google Scholar. If you're new to Google Scholar, think of it as Google for the academic world. You can start by simply entering a few different keywords that are relevant to your research question, and it will then present a host of articles for you to review. What you want to pay close attention to here is the number of citations for each paper. The more citations a paper has, the more credible it is, generally speaking. There are some exceptions, of course. Ideally, what you're looking for are well-cited papers that are highly relevant to your topic. That said, keep in mind that citations are a cumulative metric. So older papers will often have more citations than newer papers just because they've been around longer. So don't fixate on this metric in isolation. Relevance and recency are also very important. 
Beyond Google Scholar, you'll also definitely want to check out the academic databases and aggregators such as ScienceDirect, PubMed, JSTOR, and so on. These will often overlap with the results you find in Google Scholar, but they can also reveal some hidden gems, so be sure to check them out. Once you've worked your way through all the literature, you'll want to catalog all this information in some sort of spreadsheet so that you can easily recall who said what, when, and within what context. If you'd like, we've got a free literature spreadsheet that helps you do exactly that. As always, you can find the link in the description. All right, with your research question pinned down and your literature digested and cataloged, it's time to move on to step number two. That is planning your actual research paper. It might sound obvious, but it's really important to have some sort of rough outline in place before you start writing your paper. So often, we see students eagerly rushing into the writing phase only to end up with a disjointed research paper that rambles on in multiple directions. Trust me, that is not where you want to be. Now, the secret here is not to get caught up in the fine details. Realistically, all you need at this stage is a bullet point list that describes in broad strokes what you'll discuss and in what order. It's also useful to remember that you're not glued to this outline. In all likelihood, you'll chop and change some sections once you start writing, and that's perfectly okay. What's important is that you have some sort of roadmap in place from the start. At this stage, you might be wondering, but how should I structure my research paper? Well, there's no one-size-fits-all solution here. But in general, a research paper will consist of a few relatively standardized components. Namely, the introduction, the literature review, the methodology, and the analysis. Let's take a look at each of these. First up, we've got the introduction section. As the name suggests, the purpose of the introduction is to set the scene for your research paper. There are usually at least four ingredients that go into the section. These are the background to the topic, the research problem and resultant research question, and the justification or rationale. If some of these terms sound like gibberish to you, we've got videos and articles covering each of them. Check out the links below. The next section of your research paper will typically be your literature review. Remember all that literature you worked through in step one? Well, this is where you'll present your interpretation of all that content. You do this by writing about recent trends, developments, and arguments within the literature, but more specifically, those that are relevant to your research question. The literature review can oftentimes seem a little daunting, even to seasoned researchers, so be sure to check out our explainer videos covering that section. All right, with the introduction and lit review out of the way, the next section of your paper is the research methodology. In a nutshell, the methodology section should describe to your reader what you did beyond just reviewing the existing literature to answer your research question. For example, what data did you collect? How did you collect that data? How did you analyze that data? And so on. For each choice, you'll also need to justify why you chose to do it that way and what the strengths and weaknesses of your approach were. Now, it's worth mentioning that for some research papers, this aspect of the project may be a lot simpler. For example, example, you may only need to draw on secondary sources, in other words, existing data sets. In some cases, you may just be asked to draw your conclusions from the literature search itself. In other words, there may be no data analysis component at all. But if you are required to collect and analyze data, you'll need to pay a lot of attention to the methodology section and make sure that you present a well thought out design. If the prospect of crafting a watertight methodology feels a little intimidating to you, check out our research method methodology bootcamp where we unpack this topic from A to Z. To say thank you for watching this video, we've included an exclusive 50% discount in the link below. All right, so we've now covered the introduction, literature review, and methodology. By this stage of your paper, you will have explained what your research question is, what the existing literature has to say about that question, and how you analyzed additional data to try to answer your question. So the natural next step is to present your analysis of that data. The section is usually called the results or analysis section, and this is where you'll showcase your findings. Depending on your school's requirements, you may need to present and interpret the data in one section Section, or you might split the presentation and the interpretation into two sections. In the latter case, your results section will just describe the data, and the discussion is where you'll interpret that data and explicitly link your analysis 
back to your research question. If you're not sure which approach to take, check in with your professor or take a look at past papers to see what the norms are for your program. Okay, once you've presented and discussed your results, it's time to wrap it up. This usually takes the form of the conclusion section. In the conclusion, you'll need to highlight the key takeaways from your study and close the loop by explicitly answering your research question. Again, the exact requirements here will vary depending on your program, and you may not even need a conclusion section at all. So be sure to check with your professor if you're unsure. All right, we've covered a lot of ground here. To recap, step two is all about developing a rough outline for your research paper, before you start writing. This outline will ensure that you stay focused and present a clear narrative throughout your paper. In terms of structure, you'll typically need an introduction, a literature review, a methodology, an analysis section, and a conclusion. Remember, our free research paper template covers all of these and provides access to loads of free resources. So be sure to grab a free copy for yourself below. All right. On to the third and final step. Finally, it's time to get writing. All too often though, students hit a brick wall right about here. So how do you avoid this happening to you? Well, there's a lot to be said when it comes to writing a research paper or any sort of academic piece, but we'll share three practical tips to help you get started. First and foremost, it's essential to approach your writing as an iterative process. In other words, you need to start with a really messy first draft and then polish it over multiple rounds of editing. Don't waste your time trying to write a perfect research paper in one go. Instead, take the pressure off yourself by adopting an iterative approach. Secondly, it's important to always lean towards critical writing rather than descriptive writing. What does this mean? Well, at the simplest level, descriptive writing focuses on the what, while critical writing digs into the so what. In other words, the implications. If you are not familiar with these two types of writing, don't worry. We've got a great explainer video containing loads of examples. Last but not least, you'll need to get your referencing right. Specifically, you'll need to provide credible, correctly formatted citations for the statements you make. We see students making referencing mistakes all the time, and it costs them dearly. The good news is that you can easily avoid this by using a simple reference manager. If you don't have one, check out our video about Mendeley, an easy and free reference reference management tool that you can start using today. All right, so we've now covered our tried and trusted three-step process to write a high-quality research paper. To recap, the three steps are, number one, to choose a research question and review the literature. Number two, to plan your paper structure and draft an outline. And number three, to take an iterative approach to writing, focusing on critical writing and strong referencing. Remember, this is just a big picture overview of the research paper development process, and there's a lot more nuance to unpack. So be sure to grab a copy of our free research paper template and check out the free resources below for more. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and be sure to check out this video next.